lab is interested in understanding how the hippocampus and related brain structures allow the brain to learn, to remember, and to make decisions based on those memories. In the context of this particular study, we are interested in understanding how the hippocampus interacts with the nucleus accumbens to support the associations between locations in the world and the rewards that one might get there. So for instance, if you found a new coffee shop in your neighborhood that you wanted to remember how to get back to, you'd want to remember not only the spatial route that you took to get there, but any actions you took along that route that would be most likely to lead you back to that reward in the future. The hippocampus can be divided into multiple subparts. One of them, the dorsal part of the hippocampus, is well known to be important for spatial coding. But the dorsal part of the hippocampus doesn't actually talk that strongly to the nucleus accumbens, we thought. In contrast, the ventral hippocampus part of the hippocampus, which is most strongly associated with things like emotions, has a very strong projection to the nucleus accumbens. So at the beginning of this project, we actually didn't know whether it would be the dorsal hippocampus or the ventral hippocampus that was primarily communicating with the nucleus accumbens about spatial and reward information. And based on patterns of anatomical connectivity, we actually hypothesized that it would be the ventral. We also didn't know in general whether inputs from dorsal and ventral hippocampus would be processed together or separately in the accumbens. So to address these questions, we needed to find some time at which we could understand how these areas were talking to each other. And for that discrete pattern, we took advantage of something called a sharp wave ripple event. As an animal moves through an environment, hippocampal place cells fire in specific locations in space. During times of immobility, there's an oscillation called a sharp wave ripple. During this ripple, we can sometimes observe sequences of place cells that reactivate in the same order as they were active during the experience, recapitulating a piece of that experience in a time-compressed memory replay. So the idea is that at the times of these sharp wave ripples, the hippocampus could be broadcasting information to the nucleus accumbens, helping it link locations with reward. But while we knew quite a lot about what was going on outside the hippocampus at the times of dorsal hippocampal sharp wave ripples, what was going on at the times of these ventral ripples was basically completely unstudied. Using sharp wave ripples to identify times of information transfer, we wanted to ask whether outputs from dorsal and ventral hippocampus are occurring together or separately, and whether they engage similar or distinct representations of space and reward in the nucleus accumbens. To answer these questions, we chronically implanted rats with drivable tetrodes in the dorsal hippocampus, ventral hippocampus, and nucleus accumbens, and recorded simultaneously from all three areas while they performed a spatial memory task. The animal had to learn that certain spatial paths lead to reward, and that he has to alternate between them, which relies on recent memory of where he just was and is hippocampally dependent. We can then look at ripples during times of immobility on the maze such as when the animal is at reward wells, as well as how nucleus accumbens neurons fire during the behavior. First, we found that during times of awake immobility, dorsal and ventral hippocampal ripples do not occur at the same time. This suggests that dorsal and ventral hippocampus are sending temporally separate outputs to downstream regions. We found that Cummins neurons tended to fire oppositely during dorsal versus ventral ripples, either activated during dorsal and suppressed during ventral ripples, or suppressed by dorsal ripples and activated during ventral. So as far as we know, this is the first time that we've seen that sets of neurons downstream from the hippocampus can respond differently to hippocampal inputs. And this really suggests that the, these two parts of the hippocampus, the dorsal and the ventral part, communicate differently and at different times with different subpopulations of downstream neurons in the accumbens. Next, to ask whether these separately reactivated populations carry distinct or similar representations of the task, we analyzed the fine patterns of nucleus accumbens neurons during behavior. We found that the dorsal ripple activated cells tended to fire very similarly on the different spatial paths of the maze that led to reward encoding the same relative position or point of progression along each spatial path. In addition, the same population tended to fire more when the animal had just come from a reward as opposed to an error, tracking reward history. So if you think back to the example that Mari gave earlier of remembering how to get to your favorite coffee shop, we think that you can think of these D-plus neurons as encoding this combination of where you are and what you were doing that would help you get there in the future. By contrast, the ventral ripple activated cells fired dissimilarly on the different paths and did not show a preference for reward. 
So in this task, where the animal has to learn the associations between places and rewards, we see that it's really the dorsal inputs, or the dorsal patterns of activity, that engage the accumbens, not the ventral ones. So you might be wondering then, what do these ventral ripple activated cells do? We wondered the same thing, and our leading hypothesis right now is that they might be specialized for a different type of task, perhaps one involving aversive learning instead of reward learning. To summarize, we found that dorsal and ventral hippocampus send outputs via sharp wave ripples to the nucleus accumbens at separate times, engaging distinct subpopulations of accumbens neurons in opposite ways. These subpopulations represent different information about the task, with only the network activated by the dorsal hippocampus related to spatial and reward information.